Uh, we're gonna go over sacral issues, which I'm writing a paper on right now. Oop. Um, which I'm writing a paper on right now. Um, an easier way to diagnose it, and treat it, it's made way too complex um, to the point that nobody can really understand it. Um, and that is why I see these poor people come in here all the time telling me that they think about ending their own life. I had somebody two weeks ago, right before vacation, told me I'm gonna wait for my kid to be grown and if I have to live like this, I'm not gonna live like this, I'm gone. It's crazy. Anyways, in my next paper, I have a column in the data table, contemplated suicide. That's what I'm putting in there because the medical system thinks this either doesn't know about it or think this is some pesky thing. It's not a pesky thing. These people are screwed, okay? They have nobody and they just suffer. It's awful, okay? Um, so, um, SI joint dysfunction is now solved, okay? We all know, go to my website, wiltonmrt.com and you can read my article under publications, okay? So SI joint dysfunction, nobody should be suffering with that. I got a ton of videos on YouTube, uh, Welt methods, subscribe to my channel and about how to diagnose it, how to treat it, the whole nine yards. Okay, now, um, so in women, SI joint dysfunction always goes hand in hand, um, not always, but especially in the chronic pain world, nine out of 10 times it goes hand in hand with sacral issues. So these women have, so SI joint pain, okay, is felt, so they can feel it up in and around here, Okay, up and around here, right? They can feel it up here, right? Sometimes the quadratus lumborum, which pulls it into an upslip. It's always caused by an upslip and or outflare. Watch my videos, okay? Um, and it can come around here into the groin, okay? Come down the side of the leg and look like that, okay? This right here, if you put, you need to put every single person uh, from L1 to the foot on this, um, on this uh, this SI protocol, okay? So we don't have to worry about SI joint dysfunction again. I wrote the book on SI joint and, and it still catches me off guard. I had a lady the other day, I couldn't believe that it was SI joint. I said it out loud. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that's SI joint. She had sharp pain right here. And I'm thinking it's sacrum with extension, right? Turned out to be SI joint. And I'm like, cause I gapped both of her SIs, boom, it was gone. I'm like, that's crazy. Anyways. Um, so that's SI joint, okay? Sacral issues, okay? The medical system does not check for the sacral issues, okay? They teach it in school, but it's way too complex, which is why I'm gonna water it down in this next paper I'm writing and show how to um, diagnose this much easier um, and treat it. So um, the sacral issue is the person will have pain along the base of their spine right here, especially in extension, hurts to sit on certain surfaces, okay? Um, they'll say, ask them that question. Does it hurt to sit on certain surfaces? Okay, they're talking about a sacral shear. Okay, the sacral shear is caused by a sacral torsion. Okay, so the sacrum torsions and it causes a shearing at the base of the spine. Okay, that shearing is either caused by a sacral torsion or an anterior tilt. Okay, um, so the so you always realign the sacral torsion first. Now, when all right, so on Instagram, it's flipped, but when, so when I ask somebody to press up, okay, 99.99999999% of the time, my left thumb drops when I put it on the ILAs right here. You got to have them keep their glutes relaxed. I'm going to show you on my assistant in a second. You have them keep their glutes relaxed and press up and my left thumb drops. If you were going to say that your right thumb dropped and I was in that clinic, I would have checked probably 10 times to make sure that like I saw what I saw because I've been, I, this is all I do for a living is this mechanical back pain thing. And I've only seen three of them where my right thumb dropped, okay? So you got it, so it's, it's so rare, I don't know why, but it is just so rare that, that I would check 10 times because you have to have the, the correct side because if you strengthen the wrong side, then you're gonna, you know, you're gonna create a problem. You're gonna make their problem worse, okay? So when they press up, your left thumb drops, okay? So what you're gonna do, I'm gonna show you in a second, is you push on the right side here and you push that way, okay? To clear the base. You don't push that way because you'll just jam this base. So you're kind of adding traction to it and pushing it that way, okay? And then you put, you put it back into neutral and now perform the aggravating motion again 
extension usually, boom, the pinching's gone. Okay, now we know it was from asacral torsion, okay? And we strengthen the right piriformis to bring it back into neutral, okay? So that's a sacral torsion, okay? They have buttock pain along here with the sacral torsion too. What they'll do is they'll, they'll go like this, right along their butt, like that, okay? Um, so that's sacral torsion. And you know, they get diagnosed with piriformis spasm or sciatica or whatever. But the question is, is why is the piriformis spasm to begin with? And the answer is because the piriformis attaches right here. And when this thing rotates, it causes the piriformis to get aggravated, okay? Gotta ask why. Things don't just hurt. Something is causing it, okay? All right, so that's sacral torsion, okay? 90, let's say 8% of people that come in here with a sacral issue, all I do is fix the, strengthen the right side and their pain goes away and they're good, okay? Um, it usually takes about five to seven weeks. Now, the, um, the other thing that it could be is an anterior tilt of the sacrum. Okay, which is that right there. Okay, so what I do is I realign the torsion first. Okay, I make sure I realign the torsion first. Okay, and once I realign the torsion, okay, if they still have pain, what I do after that is I push down this way, I push that way here. What I'm doing is essentially that, okay, and I'm unpinching it to see if, if, if there's an anterior tilt that's causing that pinching. Okay. Realign the torsion first, and then push down here in that direction, okay, right, like like that, okay? And you're unpinching, have them press up, perform the aggravating motion, okay? Now, why does the anterior tilt happen? Well, most of the time, it's from a hyperlordosis. So the, the reason why they have an anterior tilt is because they're like this, okay? Like, you know, big sway back, right? And it's pinching the base of their spine. You gotta fix the anterior, you gotta fix the hyperlordosis, and put them into a posterior pelvic tilt, okay? Which is, you gotta get them into more that right there, okay? That right there, okay? And that'll, that'll take the hyperlordosis out of their spine and unpinch this right here. Now, the other day, um, let me get my assistant. I know, can you come here for a second? So the other day, I wanted to know if I should do a posterior pelvic tilt um, strengthening rehab, okay? Stretch the hip flexors, strengthen the hamstrings, okay? To get them in a posterior pelvic tilt, right? And I wanted to know whether I should do it or not, okay? I thought it was mostly sacral torsion. Um, I thought there was a little bit of an anterior tilt. So I randomly just thought of this the other day. Um, and it, it, I believe that it would, it's very helpful, okay? So go ahead and lay on your belly for me, please. So let me bring this down without dropping you guys. If you're just logging on, let me know who you are, where you're from, okay? Um, I always like to hear from you, see who's hanging out. Okay, so sacral issues, okay? So first you clear the SI joint, right? Watch one of the videos, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your thumbs on the ILAs right here, okay? Have them relax their glutes and say, press up like a cobra. So go ahead and press up like a cobra. If my left thumb drops, which it always does, okay, it's never the right side. If it is, check 10 times, okay, is what you do is you push right here on the right ILA that way, okay? So it would be that way, like this. And just hang out, apply a lot of pressure, hang out, and uh, you can kind of feel it rotating a little bit, okay? And then I would say, well, first you would have them press up and I know the aggravating motion. So first I would say, go ahead and press up. And does that pinch right here? And she would say, yeah, at the base of my spine, it pinches. So now I go like this and I realign it, okay? And maybe hang out for a minute or two, okay? And then I say, now go ahead and press up, right? So go ahead and press up. And I say, is that still there? If she says, no, it's gone. Then I know what it is. We strengthen the right piriformis, okay? But if she says it's still there, sometimes I'll just hold it there with my hand because maybe I just didn't do it enough. So I'll say, press up again. Go ahead and press up. And I'll say, is that still there? And if she says no, then I say, okay, well, it was a sacral torsion causing the shearing at the base of the spine. If she still says that there is still pain at the base of the spine, my next move is this. Is I push the sacrum that way. 
straight that way, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm going like, like that at the base of the spine, okay? So now go ahead and press up like a cobra. And I'll say, does that still, is the pain still there? If she says no, I say, okay, well, she has an anterior tilt, okay? Um, of the sacrum. Now, what else, I, what else I wanna do? So I wanted to know the other day, I'm sitting there and I'm like, should I put this person on a, a uh, posterior pelvic tilt rehab program? Um, and then I'm like, well, why don't, I, why don't I see if it helps, it, right? So I went like this and I fired her hamstrings, hold, like this, right? So I'm taking her pelvis and I'm going like that with it, okay? And I'm taking the whole pelvis, the sacrum and everything, and I'm putting it into that right there while she's prone like this. So I went like this and I said, now press up. And she said, no, now it's gone. And I'm like, okay, well, no. So I essentially put her into a posterior pelvic tilt by, you know, just by firing her hamstrings. And I'm like, okay, well, she's definitely getting on that program then because that helped her right here on the table, okay? So to diagnose mechanical issues, which is what the medical system misses, we need to be able to accurately assess exactly what's happening and then put them into the alignment that you think that they should be in. And whenever it leaves their pain, then you know exactly what was wrong with them, okay? Thank you, Anna. Um, so, now remember, you have to, so, you have to uh, fix the, um, the sacral torsion before, well, actually you can do them both. You, you, so the way that you've, you fix the anterior tilt, a lot of time if you trace their spine, they have a hyperlordosis, okay? Stretch the hip flexor, strengthen the hamstrings, okay? Um, but to, strength, to, to fix the sacral torsion, you strengthen the right piriformis, okay? Um, if you take my rehab results course, I give you all my protocols, sets, reps, everything, it's all right there. Um, this is everything I do in my clinic. Um, so that's that with that. Uh, if anybody's any questions for me about this, let me know. Um, it is, uh, the sacral issues you gotta get, because I see people in here all the time. I'm telling you, it's crazy. People, lives are destroyed from this. And then they get fusion surgeries. And, it, and that makes it worse because the, the, you know, because it never fixed the sacral issue, okay? Or the SI joint issue. Okay, so you have to uh, accurately assess that. And if you don't, then these poor people suffer forever. Okay, so we need to, um, to fix that. Okay, um, so that is a, another way to determine whether if you put somebody into a posterior pelvic tilt, whether you should do that rehab. Now listen, that rehab takes about eight weeks. Okay, strengthening the hamstring, stretching the hip flexors. So normally I tell my patients to take about five to seven weeks with a sacral issue. If I need to address a hyperlordosis, I tell them it'll be about eight weeks, okay? Um, about, okay? Uh, that takes a little bit while longer um, to, to fix the, the lord, hyperlordosis of the lumbar spine to prevent the pinching, okay? That makes sense. All right, that's that for today. If you have any comments, let me know when you just log on. Let me know who you are, where you're from. All right, and... Um, that's it. Give that a shot. Okay. Peace.